Inside City Limits is a presentation of Comcast. Welcome to Inside City Limits, the show that brings you the best in San Francisco's arts and entertainment. I'm Diane DeCastro. On tonight's show, we'll get a behind-the-scenes look at an arts festival that's already underway. Then, stop by SoMart's Gallery and see their latest exhibit, and Tim will take us out for a bite to eat. We'll do that and so much more after we hear from you, our people on the street. What's your favorite theater in San Francisco? My favorite theater would be the AMC um, 1000 on Venice. We love going to the Metreon. That would be the Roxy Theater. Today we're here at the African American Art and Culture Complex finding out more about the Afro Solo Arts Festival. Over the course of six weeks, the festival celebrates African American artists giving voice to the black experience. We'll have a chance to talk with some of the folks and artists involved. First, let's head out to see some dance theater. <laughs> I established Universal Arts in 1998. I was an active member of the downtown New York City spoken word scene and um, dance, hip hop scene. Um, and I just wanted to try to pull together some of the artists that I've been working with in these clubs into a unified kind of a more organized theatrical production. And so our first one was called The Beat. This was established from the collaboration of a lot of different artists like Bakari Wilder from Bring On The Noise, Bring On The Funk. Um, a lot of spoken word artists and you know MCs and dancers from the Lower East Side scene. And it was generated from my experience of going to a hip hop club and seeing like 200 people freezing on beat at the exact same moment. And I was like totally blown away. I mean I've been to many, you know, I was in Stomp, I've dealt with rhythm for my whole life. But to just step back and observe the power of rhythm to synchronize a whole community of people into this unified beat really overpowered me. And I went home and I wrote a poem called The Beat that night. And it was so good that my producer said, why don't we expand that into a full length show? mix a lot of components together, um, you know, from modern dance to hip hop to African to tap. John Kloss is our uh, featured tapper in the show, taking the role of Bakari Wilder that he did in New York City and in Zimbabwe, and he's doing a fantastic job, by the way. So we've got all these different genres, and also the music changes from Latin jazz to um, you even have a little moment of classical, you know, just trying to really give its just due to the rhythm across cultures and genres messages that we can be united in our diversity that that beat is everything from your heartbeat to you know the beat of your step to the beat of your your moment to moments decisions in life and everybody has their own journey between your first heartbeat and your last heartbeat but there's specific times that we all hit it at the same time you feel that power and although we're diverse and we have all these different ways that we're coming to that rhythm um, there are times when we all just hit it and feel that oneness so that's, that's the message underneath it, is the power of music to be an analogy for social unity and diversity. Welcome back to Inside City Limits. Today we're here at the African American Art and Cultural Complex celebrating the 10th annual Afro Solo Arts Festival. And to tell us more about the festival is Thomas Simpson, the artistic founder and director. Thank you very much. It's so good for you to be back on the show with us. Well, we're really happy that you came to let us share what's happening with Afro Solo with the public. And what's happening this year? This year is our 10th anniversary. It's very exciting. We have a festival that's stretching a little bit longer than our past and celebrating our 10th year. We have theater, dance, music, spoken word. We have some fabulous concerts. The festival is going to be wonderful, and we invite all of your viewers to come and check out Afro 
Solo Arts Festival 10. Where is it happening? It, it will be happening at two primary places. One here at the African American Art and Culture Complex, that's 762 Fulton Street, and at Yoba Buena Center for the Arts, that's at 701 Mission Street. And it's happening for six weeks and it's already underway. Yes, it's um, pretty phenomenal for what we're trying to uh, obtain and what we're trying to attain in terms of showcasing black artists giving voice to our experience and in doing so what we found is we give voice to humanity and the bonds that draw all of us together through the arts. Well Thomas I want to ask you so many more questions and we're going to do that when we come back. Right now we're going to head over to SoMarts and see their latest exhibit. The Cafe Show is a benefit for SoMarts Gallery. Um, recently they've had some funding cuts and they've actually had to lay off some staff. Well, it's a, a great event space and they've been doing a lot of quality shows here for years. Um, we're working in conjunction with SoMarts Gallery, Artwork and SoMarts Together, to put on a, a fundraising benefit so we can help uh, su uh, supplement some of the funding that they've lost and some of the staff that they currently have so that we can basically help keep the doors open and keep the space available for local artists to show their work. This show, there's works of all different styles, all different media. Um, there's 104 artists represented in the show. There's an auction as part of the show. It's a silent auction that runs every day, um, Tuesday through Saturdays. The auction ends every day, and basically, at the end of the day, you can, if, you're, if your bid is the winning one, you can walk away with a piece that day. Same for the pieces in the show, actually. What separates it and what makes it a cafe show is that if you decide to purchase a piece as opposed to waiting towards the end of the show to take the piece, you can take it that day. Um, and the works are figurative, there's statues um, and other installation, mixed media works, uh, works made of pencil, acrylics, oils, the full gambit. Every Saturday, there'll be a full slate of events going on here at the gallery. Um, between noon and 4 p.m., there'll be poets, there'll be musicians, there'll be um, an, an artist, Josefina Bosch, creating an installation. She's using this as her gallery space during the, uh, during the run of the show. Um, there will be a full slate of events. You can go to our website, um, artworksf.com, for an updated list, um, and it's a free, it's a free event. I guess the the main reason that people should would, should come down is because it's a great show. Um, I'm certain that there would be a style or an artist or a piece that would touch that would touch people that would come down to see the show since there's so many works with so many different artists and the other reason besides that is because of the um, support for the gallery space. Thomas, let's talk about some of the highlights of the Afro Solo Festival. What do you have going on? Yes, we have a wide range of arts taking place this year. We have a visual arts exhibit called One Black Day. It's a photographic exhibition. We enlisted African-American photographers to go out and photograph the black community. And one day, they did. We have some phenomenal photos. We're calling that exhibit One Black Day, My Race, My Grace. We also have a full week or four performances of local emerging artists giving voice to the black experience through theater, dance, music, and spoken word. We have a fabulous comedy concert coming on August the 23rd at Yuba Buena Center for the Arts featuring four comics. It is going to be hilarious. One particular artist we're having this year is Omar Sosa. He's um, Afro-Cuban. He's going to give a fantastic concert. Uh, he's a pianist and he'll have his quintet with him. Then on uh, September the 6th we have a performance of what, what we're calling Artists from the Black Diaspora in that we have artists from Nigeria, other countries in Africa, from the Caribbean, who are going to give voice to the black experience from other parts of the world. So a global experience. Yes, yes. And that's part of what we see as our future, too, showcasing black artists from all around the world. Thomas, why is the Afro Solo Arts Festival so important? Diane, I think it's really important for several reasons. One, it allows the artists, the African-American artists, to give voice to our experience. Number two, we use it as a gathering place for people to come and kind of through the arts explore what it means to be human. I think for those reasons it's really important. One place people can look us up to find out the rest of our schedule is at our website which is www 
www.afrosolo.org. Great, and we want people to definitely go there and find out about all these great events. Thanks, Thomas, for joining us again on the show, and I can't wait to see you again. Thank you. Now let's head out with Tim for a night on the town. Inside this unusual triangle-shaped building is the Zuni Cafe. By word of mouth only, it has been a world-class fixture in San Francisco for over 25 years because it reflects San Franciscans and their expectations. High quality and unfussiness. Now in 2003, the James Beard Foundation awarded the Zuni Cafe the best restaurant in all of America. Now I'm sitting down with owners Judy Rogers and Vince Calcagno and I'm armed with some questions. With all the praise and the awards recently, how hard is it to get a table and can I come wearing jeans? Their answers might just surprise you. Vince, with all the recognition you've been getting lately uh, with the restaurant, tell me how hard is it to get a reservation here? Well, it's always been somewhat difficult to get a reservation, but one thing we do at Zuni for, and that we've done for years is we keep a third of the dining room open for walk-ins. You have this beautiful front bar area. That is, isn't that area always open for walk-ins? Yes, it definitely is a very fun place to hang out and kind of watch the world go by. Now, recently you've won the James Beard Foundation Award and that's for the most outstanding restaurant in all of America. Tell me what that was like. And there were five nominees throughout the country and no one knows who's going to win. And it's announced that night and I, Susie Kurtz was there and I got to meet her, which was very fun. And then winning was a thrill. It was, you know, for a restaurant that started on a very shoestring budget, to get this kind of recognition after 25 years is really wonderful. Tell me about the kinds of people that come to the restaurant. It's quite gratifying. It's such a diverse clientele. And, you know, I used to always make the joke from tuxedos to bikinis. Judy, um, describe to me sort of the uh, cuisine that's served at Zuni. Zuni is a very, very lusty, gutsy, personal cuisine that's based on the traditions of France and Italy, regions that I visited and lived in a lot when I was younger. Now, just describe some of um, your signature dishes that most people can find on the menu when they visit. Well, the first one I love most of all is the house-cured anchovies, which are fish that come in live, and we prepare them here just by curing them on rock salt using a method that's 700, 800 years old. Um, and they're just served in extra virgin olive oil with some savings of parmesan cheese, uh, nissoise olives, and slivers of celery. I should talk about the chicken. We salt them in advance, which makes them really tender and succulent. And then they're roasted to order. And it's served with a, a pretty unusual, very delicious salad. What's your signature dessert? My favorite dessert of all is an espresso granita, which is a very, very strong, fairly sweet um, shaved ice, chopped ice. Um, made of espresso that's layered sort of parfait style with very thick, very sweet whipped cream. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for being here with us today. My pleasure. For many regulars, Zuni is their dress up restaurant, while for others it's their dress down spot. That's because there really are two kinds of dining experiences here. There are those quiet, romantic tables, as well as those seen and be seen spots. Customers enjoy both faces of this award-winning restaurant, as will you. More Inside City Limits after this. Summertime, and the living is easy. Welcome back to Inside City Limits. We're here at the African American Art and Cultural Complex finding out more about the 10th annual Afro Solo Arts Festival. And now joining me on the show is Rhonda Bennon, one of the wonderful performers in this year's festival. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you and welcome. You're a vocalist. What do you consider your genre? Well, I consider myself a multi-genre singer. Um, I am a member of Linda Tillery's uh, five-piece a cappella percussion-driven folk ensemble, which does African-American folk music. I have a band called Rhonda Benin and Soulful Strut, where we do rhythm and blues, jazz, pop, and blues. And then I'm also the lead singer of Mal Sharp's big band, where I do traditional and swing. So I do a whole bunch of music, a lot of styles. And you've played with some big names, including Kenny G. Um, K Kenny G, uh, Taj Mahal, Odetta, yeah, I've been to 13 countries. Congratulations Thank on you, that. thank you. As an artist, why do you feel that the Afro Solo Arts Festival is so important? Well, it's also always good to be able to showcase 
um, to have the kind of publicity that this festival has um, and to individually show because what we see is <clears throat> in, in, the, in the media um, sometimes just a pitch toward urban music and forgetting about all the other genres. There's jazz, there's folk, and there's just a lot of things that sometimes get igno ignored so this is a perfect place. Well we want people to be able to come and hear you sing. How can they find out more about you? Well um, you can always find out where I'm singing with Linda Tillery in the Cultural Heritage mm -hmm. by going to www.culturalheritage.com because I've been traveling so much for the last 10 years, I haven't had time to put my website up. But you can email me at rbenin at pagbell.net, and I do send out an, e an email mailing list every month to let you know where I play. Well, thanks so much, Rhonda, for okay. joining us on the show. All right, thank you. Now we're going to head out with Martine. Who says nightlife is no longer in San Francisco? Look around. All these people are waiting to get into the hottest club in San Francisco, Mezzanine, right behind the old mint at Fifth and Mission. Well, I'm not going to wait in line with these guys. I'm going to go in and find out what all the fun is about. Night crawlers hungry for world-class partying and art lovers with an eye for urban design? Guess what? Your prayers have been answered. Get your groove on at Mezzanine, the freshest destination in town. Mezzanine is the creation of club impresario Audrey Joseph, former owner of legendary night spot Club Townsend. What on earth, after the run that you've had in this town, ruling the club scene, brought you out of retirement? Opportunity and boredom. <laughs> <laughs> Do tell. Uh, well, it felt like there was a void, and I also saw the opportunity for doing something different. I feel like the country in general, the city, needed something new, something that was not the same old thing. What is it about, about mezzanine that really stands uh, itself apart from what else is available out there as far as San Francisco nightlife is concerned? Well, first of all, mezzanine is state of the art, and it's a little bit classier than the old garage places. The sound system here is the only installed version of this sound system in the States as of now. It's a Function One sound system. The speakers were built for the configuration of the room, and the design is very, very different. Our sculpted and poured concrete floors and bar tops, our lounge. Uh, the dance floor itself has a rubberized cushion underneath it and a floating dance floor on top to prevent leg fatigue. The multimedia art and club space also stages outrageous entertainment such as highly trained circus performers, contortionists, and fiercely dressed go-go dancers. Then there's Oliver, the guest list host. What kind of bribes are you accepting? Well, I haven't accepted any bribes yet, but um, I have been offered uh, $500 for two people. Keep in mind that mezzanine isn't only open at night. During the week, uh, we are going to have art gallery shows. It's a place where emerging artists have a chance to show their stuff where they wouldn't have a chance otherwise. Is nightlife still alive in San Francisco? I'm asking you right now, right here. Most definitely. Gotta love it. It's just like New York. <laughs> what do you think of Bezzany? It's fabulous. It rocks. So why are you still sitting there on that couch? Get on down to Mezzanine. Call for more information, 552-3696. What's Martha cooking in the kitchen? The books, for Christ's sake! <laughs> Welcome back to Inside City Limits. We're here at the African American Art and Cultural Complex finding out about the 10th Annual Afro Solo Arts Festival. And now joining me on the show is Donald Lacey, a comedian. Hello, how are you? I'm good, and yourself? I'm great. I'm out of my garage, thank you. But anyway, well, it's we'll good have to be to, here. We'll have to talk about that a little later. Yeah, yeah. How are you involved with the festival? Well, I've known Thomas for a while, and I've been supporting this festival since it started. And uh, he came to me a couple of years ago to get some comedians from around the area to put together a comedy night. And uh, this is the second year that we've been doing comedy as part of the festival. And uh, it's a great show, great comedians, all local people who I've known over the years. And it'll be a lot of fun. Why do you 
enjoy participating in a festival like this? Well, it's it's a good opportunity, particularly for African American artists. And by the way, I am African American. I know some people looking. Hey, they got a terrorist on the show. No, I'm not. I'm just black guy. Just a little girl. She's laughing over this. All right. <laughs> no, but because uh, I get stopped at the airport since 9/11 all the time. I have to tell people I'm not from the Middle East. I'm from Middle East Oakland. Thank you. I'll be here all week. But uh, so it's just good, a, a rare opportunity. Diane, she says she doesn't know what to think of me. Hey, but no, it's a rare opportunity to get uh, African American artists together and show a lot of different disciplines. So it's it's a, not only fun for me to participate, but to go to watch some of the singers and some of the actors and musicians as well. What I was really thinking is I want to see you, and I want to find out more how I can find out about you. How, how, how can I do it? Well, you can go on the website, www.lovelifefoundation.org, or you can come August 23rd to the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts Theater, 8 o'clock. It'll be myself, Carla Clay, Andre the Wonder Woman, Will Walls, Jay Red, Tony Sparks, a whole slew of people. It's going to be a great show, and it's a benefit for the Love Life Foundation, a uh, uh, nonprofit that works to stop violence in the city of Oakland. Donald, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Are you hungry? I'm very hungry. Well, Y'all ain't gonna feed a brother. I'm doing this for free. <laughs> Y'all got a sandwich, a piece of chicken. We like chicken. Just anything. Let's head across town to the Canvas Cafe. The Canvas Cafe is a cultural mecca for artists and musicians and just about anyone to come and feel comfortable in a setting where they can appreciate art, enjoy the cafe, the food, and the drinks that we have. We've been here for less than two years, so we're a very new concept. Right, the food is a cross between a continental and Mediterranean fare. Um, we have a lot of sandwiches, full salad meals, um, hummus and baba ganoush, as well as um, dolmas, um, artichoke dip, and we recently added some new entrees to our menu. We have you know, some pasta dishes, a macaroni and cheese, a lasagna. And as far as drinks go, we have full range of espresso drinks, um, cold beverages. We have a wine and beer bar that has premiums and micro brews and imports only. Um, very good selection of wines as well. You know, it's a very unique concept. Um, the art gallery and the cafe in one place is, you know, kind of groundbreaking around here. In the sunset, we are the only venue really that offers live music for free. And, you know, we have a great sound here. The exhibits at the canvas are a little bit different than most galleries in that a traditional gallery setup is one artist per month. They'll show the entire work or the new body of work of that artist and then they'll change out at the end of the month and put up a new exhibit. At the canvas we have 85 artists that are showing with Hang that we currently are representing, around 85. So we have a body of work to choose from and rather than showing one artist we we put together an exhibit once a week, so we change it out once a week approximately, but we might keep a few here and there. Uh, but we, we basically, what we do is we, uh, we do a group show, and it's a constant group show, so, um, so that everybody has a chance to be up for a little while at least, and then, and then um, we sell right off the wall, so it can change daily as well. The, the canvas and hang in general are showing painting and sculpting. So, and painting includes, what we include with painting is uh, printmaking, mixed media. The reason that we don't uh, show photography is there are a lot of other galleries that show Bay Area photographers uh, that represent Bay Area work in that medium. And when, when Hang started, and Hang is the gallery that's, that's, that is um, set up at the canvas. When Hang started, there wasn't any gallery that was specifically showing Bay Area painters and Bay Area sculptors. So the, the idea behind our gallery is really just to do that, to fill a niche that hadn't been previously filled. So all the work is local. All the artists come from the talent that's, that's right here at our fingertips. And there's actually so much talent that we're constantly turning away very competent, wonderful you know, portfolios that, that we just don't have room to show. So we're the Canvas Cafe and Gallery. We're located at 1200 Ninth Avenue in the Sunset, right across the street from Golden Gate Park. Our hours are Sunday through Wednesday, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. and Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 8 a.m. to midnight. You can check us out at www.thecanvasgallery.com.
Well, that's our show. I've had the most terrific time today learning more about the Afro Solo Arts Festival. It sounds like something you and I don't want to miss. Be sure and go to their website at afrosolo.org for a complete listing of all the great events happening. If you have any questions or comments about this week's show, you can email us at InsideCityLimits at Comcast.net. I'm Diane DeCastro. Until next week, keep enjoying the site and sounds inside city limits. Oh, your daddy's rich and your mommy's good looking. So hush, little baby, don't you cry. Inside City Limits is a presentation of Comcast.